Hey, what's up everyone? Dr. Ray here and today we are going over Adobe Express, Adobe Creative Cloud Express. So what is that? It used to be called Adobe Spark, but Adobe, who likes to change the names of their things, decided to call it Adobe Express. Probably a good thing. Adobe Spark was a weird name. For some reason, as a kid, like I always called dogs Sparky, so it always reminded me of that. <laughs> um, anyway, get back on subject. So Adobe Express is basically an image editor, basically an online, in the cloud, image creator, image editor. If you want to compare it to something similar-ish to like Canva um, or so another piece of software like that. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to show you what it does, show you all the stuff it does. Um, and I'm going to show you how to use it. So first thing, if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account, what you need to use this, it just comes with it. So you've got it, right? So if you have Adobe Creative Cloud for all, you know, Dreamweaver, Photoshop, Illustrator, and all that good stuff, which any of my students all have, because we all have it for our university, but other people, professionals out there using that software, you've got Creative Cloud, you've got this software for free. So kind of cool, right? All right, so let's talk about what it is. So first of all, we're looking at the interface here. What we can see um, on the left side of the screen, you see some options like I see home, I see plus, like allows me to create something like plus. Um, we've got projects, which we can see all of our projects. So I'll click that and I can see I've got a bunch of projects here, things that just I've I've done in the past or done as samples, You're actually using Adobe Spark, because I've not used this until I just started playing around with it. Uh, we've got brands, which I don't have any brands. We've got libraries, which actually allows you to connect to like a local library and stuff. I haven't done that. I mean, then some tutorials, but you don't really need tutorials for this because it's so easy to use. All right. On the top of the screen here, we've got different templates. So if I'm creating like an Instagram story, it automatically like has the default size and like helps you with that, which is kind of cool. So if you know what you're trying to do, like poster, logo, flyer, that kind of stuff, and you can scroll through and see like, you know, YouTube thumbnail, album cover, all kinds of cool stuff. It like has options for all of that. And you can pick more, but these are just some of the ones like main ones that people use. All right. Then at the bottom here, which I thought was actually really cool, as I start scrolling down the screen, try a quick action. And what they actually allow you to do is do some actual editing of not just uh, images, but videos and sound files too. And like, I can convert a file to a PDF, so I can click like image, and they show me what I can do, like resize an image, remove a back, so I can get any image that I want like off my computer and convert it to PNG, which is pretty cool. I mean, obviously I do I would want to do that in Photoshop, but for those who don't know Photoshop, this is kind of cool. Also, it does it with video too, which is really nice. Like change speed, convert to MP4, crop, uh, merge videos. Like it's actually, that's kind of good, like a good feature. And I can do that stuff like from YouTube and lots of software like easily. Um, but, you know, and obviously you have Adobe Premiere if you have access to Creative Cloud, but still kind of cool. And same thing with PDFs, like convert to PDF so I can create an image to PDF, which is nice and do some stuff that, you know, obviously I can do in Adobe Acrobat, but it's nice that it's here. I think it's actually great. This is a, that's a new thing that Adobe Spark did not have. So it's kind of cool to see that. Um, all, and then you have like all the popular templates and like things like options that you can choose from here. Like if I'm creating a a post on Instagram, different trending backgrounds. You can scroll through and kind of take a look. I would encourage you to go ahead and scroll through and see all the different options here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly just show you how to create something because we're going to do something easy just to show you get an idea of how to do this. So I'm going to click the little plus button. I pick what I want to do. Like what do I want to do? I'm just going to pick an Instagram, let's do an Instagram post. So you get to the screen, it's gonna load up and we're gonna to get to, so the first thing they have is in Instagram posts, like they give you all these sample templates that I can use. Now you, on the left-hand side, and so here are all your templates, on the left-hand side are all your things you can do. Text, add text, add my own photos, shapes, design assets, backgrounds, logos, and libraries. And I'll kind of show you each one of those as we go through here. On the right-hand side, you can see colors, can actually add some animation, which is kind of cool. Um, I got change, change the layout, do some resizing and do some designing, um, which is kind of neat. I do like this design feature. All right, and I'll show you that in a sec. So what I'm gonna do, so you'd scroll through here and obviously since I'm in, you know, gaming and stuff, I would type in like just gaming to see what kind of themes they have for gaming. Like, do they have anything? 
Like we do a lot of game nights in our university, so I could pick that or like a giveaway, but they just give you like some samples of like, hey, here's things that that might interest you. I kind of like this one. Oh, that one's cool. It's like 80s theme. So you pick like, you know, the game night theme and automatically I could just use this, enter my information in, like add some text and use this template like they give it to you. Or I could create my own. I don't want to create my own because I'm just showing you guys an example. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool, like coming soon. Not to, And you just click on it and it adds it right here. Now if I click on it, let me double click on it. You can see the properties. I can edit the text. I can center it, change the font change the shape, add some t shadow. I can, they give me some like cool, like recommendations for different text if I wanted to do something with it. Um, but you can see how easy it is to add something. Let's just delete it. I just click the backspace button. Um, but I, I can like, and all I'm doing to add these is I'm double clicking. You can also drag it out on the screen. So you can do either. Oh, I did too many. Oops. But you can see how you can really easily make a, so the text is pretty easy. Photos, same thing. They give you a bunch of photos that you can choose from or you can add your own, upload. Let's see what gaming photos they have here. Oh, wow. They actually do have a bunch. Huh. Oh, well, these actually aren't too bad. Like if I'm doing an ad for something. Huh. It was actually not so bad of, of photos. They're like, those are pretty good stock photos, like for free, just like for things. That's not bad. And then we've got shapes, just like different default shapes that they have, design assets that we can use, backgrounds that we can use, and we don't need, you know, I don't need to use any of this. Logos, now I haven't created, I do have a logo here. It's not loading for some reason. Why is my logo not loading? I do have a logo up here. Huh, interesting, it's not loading, but I do have a logo here. And then we've got libraries. I haven't created one and I'm not connected one, but you can like connect with other things, which is pretty cool, which I thought was interesting and something they allow you to do. Um, so that's, so I, let's say I like made my image. I'm gonna close these properties out on the right hand side here. And we can just take a look at this. Like we've got our colors that we can choose from, like if we were changing like text colors or anything like that. Animation where we can like actually make things like jump on the screen, which for social media posts like isn't gonna be good, but could work for like, depending on what you're using for a story or something like that, or for like TikTok, um, changing like the backgrounds, what it looks like. We can resize things depending on what we wanna do, which is really neat that they just like, here's the default Instagram post, Instagram story, portrait, I'm, I'm annoyed that all these social media companies have different sizes for every single thing, um, but it's nice that the software like does it for you. That's pretty cool. And then we can design, like they give you just options. Like they're taking what I just created right here and give me like some options for it, like just different things that look nice. Huh, some of these aren't bad. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So it like took what I created and like made it into the, the design. Huh, yeah, I mean, that's not bad. Oh, wow, that's actually not bad. That's actually kind of cool. <laughs> I actually, I kind of like that. I mean, I don't know if I do, but it's, it's actually, it's not bad. Like they did a good job, like in one second. So that's the design. I love that feature. Fo or PowerPoint has something like that too. I use it all the time for everything. Um, so you can see how quickly you made this. And then uh, you can simply, when you're all done, you can download your image. Like I can click download, I can download it in PNG, JPEG, or PDF, perfect. Those are the, those are the types of files I would want. Um, you know, one of those three, depending on what I was doing. So that's perfect. They're not gonna give you like a development file like Photoshop or Illustrator, because that's not what the software is. So then we get to share. I can publish, I can invite people to see it, and here's the QR code, or I can send it to Google Drive. Now here's the thing. If this image right here is something that's in Adobe stock images, which means I'm not paying for that, I'm only paying for Creative Cloud. So like when I click on these photos, if I see this little crown, even though I use the photo, that means it's Adobe stock. Not a big deal. I can still download and use this image. Like it's fine. I can download and use it, um, you know. But the thing is, when I go to share it, 
If I click publish, it's going to say you need access to Adobe stock in order to use this. So that's an additional fee if you want to actually just have like a cloud link for some of these images that have that crown on them. Otherwise, yeah, you create it, download it and use it. So pretty good, pretty cool piece of software, like easy to use. Um, when you're all done, you just quickly simply go out of it and it'll save all your files are saved. I can go to my projects and look, here's here it is. I can edit it, use it, do whatever I want with it. So pretty cool. Pretty cool piece of software, pretty easy to use. All right, hope you enjoyed. Later, all.